And now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. This portion of the show is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. Maui Gym Sunglasses, the choice of the best captains. Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano. And by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Here we go. Another great hour of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. Here's Pete Gray and rock cod Rick Maxa. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with rock cod Rick Maxa. I have a great guest here, Craig Heber from NOAA. It's a rare opportunity to talk to the the feds. The <laughs> feds are here. And uh, Craig is uh, the guy that oversees uh, a lot of the stuff here on the West Coast. And he's a recreational angler to boot, a long-range guy, uh, regular on the Royal Star and in fact, he's got a Royal Star on right now, so he's a fisherman. Yeah. And we like having those guys in the in the box for us. We remember seeing the lumberjacks come and fishing for a lot of trips for a lot of years, and uh, it's always fun seeing Craig, your group of buddies that uh, that always go out fishing every year, both on short trips and long trips, and it's always a favorite amongst us in the red shirts. Everybody's excited when the lumberjacks come to town. And the interesting, you know, showing that we're aging our group's 15 years next year is our my daughter went out with us for the first time this year, and she was nine years old when we started our run. <laughs> and how old is she now? 23. Wow. Oh, that's right. She uh, she definitely had a good trip and uh, and and, and made 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 Dad proud and the other ones see it. She had a great trip and enjoyed it. First her first long range trip. So cool. How is it the Humboldt Lumberjacks come together? What is that? It's a uh, it's a group of uh, we started out with a, a group of uh, fisheries biologists that had graduated from Humboldt that live here in Southern California that were you know fishing independently together and we said why don't we get a group and get our friends from up in Humboldt that we still work with and so we got together started on Ken Frankie's boat the outer limit in year one went to the uh, first string in year two and then we had a five-year run on the Shogun and then we've been on the Royal Star now for this will be our eighth year coming up nice yes. <laughs> so cool. and as part of our group we've also set up a, a, a legacy fund we have a, a, a fishery scholarship fund from Humboldt State that was trying to get people that fish to get in back into the business. And so, um, you know, the Royal Star donates to the fund. We have fundraiser on the boats. So we had our first scholarship award winner on the boat with us this year, um, a, a young man named Gabe Shear who came out and uh, was just blown away by the whole scene. How cool Yeah, is so that? We're, trying to, awesome. we're trying to pay it forward as well as with our group. Good for you guys. That's great. Well, hey, be sure to check out this week's edition of Western Out There News, always loaded with great information. Uh, this week they have information on that San Diego jackpot tournament uh, in Mission Bay. Uh, and how about that? That's going to be a good one. Oh, September yeah. 11 and 12. And, of course, lots of local bluefin battles and pictures of giant bluefin. Check it out. This week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Hey, well, as you can hear, the second hour, tons of great information to talk about. And, again, if you want to be a part of it, we would love to hear from you. 858-457-1090. That's our local number. Or 877-792-1090. You can call that one toll free. 877 877- Seven nine two ten ninety. Going to get your chance to talk to Craig and also get your chance at winning that great prize, which again is a half day fishing trip for two aboard the Daily Double at a Point Loma Sport Fishing. It includes all the tackle rental you might need if uh, if you don't want to bring your own gear. And the phones are packed up. We're going to jump right back into them and start this hour off with Carlos calling us from Irvine this morning. Good morning, Carlos. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Morning, guys. Carlos. We, we we made it home, and uh, Carlos, of course, was on our Whalers Cove trip. And, oh, okay. Uh, team No Bananas. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just wanted to thank you, Pete and Harold Davis, for hosting another great trip. It was, it was awesome again. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. The place is amazing. I mean, and it gets better every year. The Mark and uh, Christine Powers and, and, and their crew just work so hard, and every year – there's something new and something better. New boats, yeah. new facilities, everything about it is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, a lot of the uh, the boats were equipped with new rods as well, so that really helped with the fishing. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Fishing was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we were uh, <laughs> fortunate. Um, each of us in our group, there were four of us, and uh, we all brought home about 80 pounds of uh, good quality fish. I mean, we had halibut, salmon, cod, rockfish, and, you know, our favorite Black cod. Judy loved pulling those up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right, tea. Carlos. <laughs> yeah, you caught a, you got a bunch of black cod, didn't you? No, well, we only got five this year, but still, that was 
pretty good. I mean, they were decent size. So. Yeah, they were good. You had one that was like over 20 pounds? Yeah, I do cut that on the first day, I believe. First or second. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, but also the, the whale show there was incredible this year. We had the, them bubble feeding the herring grounds when we were making bait. They were like only 20 to 50 yards away from the boat. No that way. Was it was unbelievable. <laughs> the whale so cool. show, and I got I did get some video, so I'm working on a YouTube video. Cool. Uh, but the the bubble feeding show and the, and just the entire whale show this year at Whalers Cove was beyond expectation. We always see them; they're always there because yeah. there's so much bait and herring around. But the bubble feeding, I mean, literally right yeah. on top of you, Brad. practically. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not called Whalers Go for nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, they, they were everywhere. And, of course, it, there was uh, so much uh, salmon in the water, too. There was a record pink year. Uh, so lots of pink salmon. But there's uh, the first day, um, the the because of the water changes or something, the uh, silvers had moved off a of danger point. So uh, yeah. the, we we did get it. We got some on 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 Wednesday, but then Thursday, uh, Andy, our guide, made the run across the the sound, 15 minutes to get across the sound, and got us back on. Got everybody else back on the fish, and it was just limit style fishing, nonstop yeah. action on on nice silvers. And there was a bunch of kings. King, we don't get a king, but there was a bunch of kings caught too. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. That's yeah, awesome. but um. I don't know if you've talked about the uh, Drew Varos and, and Rich Top. They had the, the two-for-one hookup that they had during the trip. Have you talked? Yeah, you no, talked go it. ahead. Yeah, well, oh, Drew, he had um, he, was, he got hooked up on a, a decent-sized halibut, and we think there was a fray on the, the Spectra, and he broke off. And then so he dropped down again and uh, caught another halibut. And as he was reeling it up, he noticed that there was another line tangled on there. And so... You know, Kevin go, went ahead and put that line on another rod and he reeled it up, and it was, it was that fish that he had caught or hooked up on before. So he basically had two halibut on one line. On one line. And then <laughs> Rich right. Top had, yeah. uh, uh, who I was fishing with, my good friend Rich Top, um, he had two silvers on one line. One was yeah. on the hook, and the other one was wrapped in the line, and so we and we landed them both. You got to yeah, be kidding yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was, that awesome. was pretty awesome. So, yeah, we, can, we should call him the Coho Cowboy now. The Coho Cowboy. And I know you're going to write a story for us, Carlos. And uh, I did post on Facebook, on our Facebook page, Let's Talk Hookup Radio Show. I posted some nice photos, a nice uh, halibut release by Rich Top. That one was, the regulation was 42 inches. That was 42 and an eighth. So we had yeah. to let him go, but uh, but uh, how many times it, did you look sideways at that thing? About trying five to, times, yeah, trying, to five times. Trying to convince yourself yeah. that that one eighth didn't yeah, exist. It just, yeah, yeah, but it did. It did. So we let him go, and but we caught plenty of great quality halibut, and there were some big ones that were released too. I know we released another one, big one, and and then Joe caught the, Joe. Uh, what the one, the two for one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the Bernetto. Yeah, Joe Bonetto, great guy and, and a regular with us on our, our trips. Now, I might mention a couple of things, too. Uh, this trip fills very, very quickly, and, and and they do hold some spots for us, but not very many. It's already half full for next year. People are already booking for 2017. We already have dates for 2017. But if you want to go with us next year, we have three options for you. We have a seven-day package. Basically, we're taking a seven-day package, and we're dividing it into a three-day and a four-day package. I know you're going on the four-day package, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have a three-day package. And then if you want to stay the whole week, you can do that too. And it's all that detail is on our website, hookup1090.com. Uh, if you want to go with us, it, it, we'd love to have you. Whaler's Cove is just an incredible experience. You, I, I cannot think anybody wouldn't love it. What do you think, Carlos? Yeah, we, we got to get the Blums to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bob Blum, he'll go next year, Bob and Carol. But they better hurry because yeah, our dates are August. <laughs> uh, the the four-day starts on August 13th and comes back on the following Tuesday. And then the three-day starts on on uh, Tuesday and comes back Saturday, August 20th. Absolute prime time for Whalers Cove. And uh, Harold Davis will be there. I'll be there. And I think we can, might even be able to twist Rick's arm if we can get him away from the tackle shop in August. No problem. Uh, to go uh, <laughs> next year, too, because uh, the invitation is certainly there. So if you want to go, uh, check out our website, hookup, uh, hookup1090.com or whalerscovelodge.com. This is not only a great place just to go fishing if you're just the guys going fishing, but it's also 
the best place I've ever been to to take a couple's trip. You said that a couple it times. It's unbelievable it's because it's not just the fishing, it's the experience. And if you're fishing 10 minutes from the lodge, if somebody says, nah, I want to, you guys go fish in the afternoon, drop me off. You or can just, do that. Yeah, if, you, if somebody needs to make a bathroom run, it's, yeah. it's no yep. big deal, and yeah, you're 10 minutes yeah. back to the dock. And their boats and, are comfortable. And, 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 you, you said know, plenty of wildlife. I mean, you hear oh. about all the whales. The like, whale that's show awesome. is just like, oh. I mean, people pay thousands of dollars to see whales and we see yeah. we see them constantly and good fishing and <laughs> good fishing to boot. so anyway it's a, it, it, it is a true great alaskan experience and, and top quality uh everything at whalers cove so always a pleasure having you carlos and the and manny and drew and 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 judy it's uh, uh really really fun yeah thanks again pete all right we'll see Later, you next carlos year. thanks sir. all right Take care, Pete. All right. All right. Well, hey, let's jump back into the phones. We got the man, our private boater guy, your saltwater guide, Captain Dave Hansen, has got our fishdope.com report. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. I think we – Dave, are you with us? Can you hear me? There got you, go. you loud and clear, buddy. Oh, good. I'm out here offshore on sat phone, so I'll do the best I can. We're going to Catalina today. We're looking for yellowtail. Today, we got a group on the boat who wants to catch some of those bigger yellows, and the fishing over at the island has been really good, so we're going to go check that out today. But this week's been a phenomenal week offshore, guys. I don't know if you've been watching what's going on on Fish Dope or not, but it's just been spectacular again, 6 to 10 miles off the ocean side there. All you want, yellowfin one day, bluefin the next, find a kelp, dorado. It's just good horseshoe-style fishing, though. One boat will get them, five boats won't. It's, you just got to really be out there and spend your time and look, and then if you get lucky, you find the right paddy or you find the spot of breaking fish, it's good fishing. But um, you, all I can say is you just got to go. You got to go. You got to get out there and go. You never know who's got the horseshoe, what day you got it. Boy, that's the thing is it just, you know, it, 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 you kind of throw a dart. Like you've said a lot of times in the past, there's so many good spots. And with Danny keeping so up on the fish dope, you know, you just kind of get up in the, the evening before, get your game plan together, drive right out, and make it happen. Yeah, exactly. You just don't know what day it's going to happen. The hardest thing for me today is I got Pete Grossbeck on the boat again. Oh, so not again. Good today. luck. Good <laughs> luck. Oh, he's down there screaming at me right now to get off the phone. Yeah, rent, <laughs> another rent rod charter, huh? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And he never looks for anything. We never catch anything when he's on the boat. Oh, my. Yeah, I'll bet. Have fun, Dave. Well, hey, fishdope.com is the source, guys like Dave. And uh, I know Pete and, and, and Captain Mark Wish uh, are reporting regularly, and they have a, a great team of guys that report regularly. If you want to save 20 bucks on a new membership to fishdope.com, you got to have it. 20 bucks off using the code HOOKUPNOW, all lowercase, no space. It lasts for an entire year, and you get to see fresh dope from guys like Dave Hansen. And if we want to go fishing with you, Dave, how do we do that? You guys, I got a charter boat now. I'm running a 65 hat up here in Dana Point. You can call me and we can get you a charter on that if you want. Or if you have your own boat and you want to get out on your own boat and learn how to use all your stuff, you can give me a call at 949-374-0786. And I'm still getting yelled at, so I got to get off the phone and get back to looking for fish. That pizza slave driver, man. Get back to work. Oh, you know my what I mean? goodness. It's <laughs> mind-boggling. Well, you tell him that we said good morning and uh, appreciate a great <laughs> report, as always. And uh, we'll certainly look forward to hearing another great one next week. Uh, one more time, shoot us the website if somebody wants to take you up on all the great information, Dave. Your Saltwater Guide. Com. Go get them. Appreciate it, Dave. Thanks for the great report. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Again, that report today is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Summer fishing means it's time to call Fisherman's Processing. And if you're on a private boat, take our advice. Do this because it is so nice. Call them the day before you go and make arrangements to drop your fish off either right at their dock on the water or in the after-hours drop bin. We talked about it yesterday, how easy that drop-in is to use. You call them, you get a tag and a lock combo. Your fish will go directly into an iced slush bin, and, and that's it. And, and you're done. And your fish is going to be a better product being in the slush bin overnight. Trust us. We've done this it's a lot. So, it's so and it's nice. much, much better quality fish filleting it the next day and the way that Fisherman's Processing does it. You got it. You yeah. you you went to so much care. I guarantee you 90% of the listeners on here are, are the same as all of us. You, you took all the care in your boat. You bled it. You spent all your money on ice. You did everything you could to keep it right. 
that's the next step of having the perfect product. You want to keep it cold for the 20, for the full 24 hours. Put it in the ice slush bin. It'll that that will keep it best. The next morning, you'll have you know Raymond and the expert team cutting that fish perfectly, filleting it, trimming it, vacuum pack it, and the next day you're going to show up and pick up vacuum pack bags a fish that's literally ready to cut open and put on the grill. There's no trimming. No. There's no bloodline. There's no teeny little corner tail pieces that cook odd because the one half of it's three inches thick and the, the back half's a half. You don't get that. You get perfect proportion pieces of filet at Fisherman's Process. But, it again, is- uh, the Sean and Rosie d- definitely want you to call first if you're dropping at the dock because sometimes they don't have the ability to, to, to utilize the dock. Sometimes it's in use and you can't do it. You'll have to drive it over there. But... So call first if you're coming in uh, before you get to the dock. And the slush bin goes for the same. You got to have the combo. You got to have the lock, and they got to know how much fish is coming in. If there's, you know, if there's 15 boats coming in, they might put in more than one bin, or you know, or vice versa. So calling is very important, and I can assure you, you will not be disappointed. It is the Fisherman's, very best way you can yep. take care of your fish. Fishermansprocessing.com. Check it out. Dennis in San Diego, you're next up on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Another hot day in San Diego. I'm telling you, I love these pictures you guys are sending me. I hooked up on your Facebook, and you guys are sending me pictures. So keep sending them to me. All right. Yeah, yeah. Rick and Ironic. Rick and Ryan did an excellent job this past week while I was up in Alaska putting up those tuna pictures. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I got a, a question for your guest. Now I'm handicapped. I like I like going on a half day boats because I don't walk too well, and I especially like the twilight boats because they're lesser amount of people. I don't walk well, and I don't want to get in people's way. But I've noticed I went Friday night and I went last month, and basically the rockfish is shut off. Am I basically going the wrong times, or have you guys noticed a, a difference in the, in, the, in the rockfish bite? If you're fishing for rockfish right now, you're fishing for the wrong species, I think. <laughs> Craig, any input on that? God, that was my thought as well. I, I think uh, I really don't have a lot of reports coming in of rockfish right now. So, um, yeah, you might want to... You might want to switch your target here, and you might have some better luck on that twilight. But uh, if not, it's just the fact that you're getting out there and there's vessels that you feel comfortable on is a great thing, and and uh, keep at it. There you go. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right, let's jump right back into them. This time we're going to talk to Lou, call us from Fullerton. What's up, Lou? Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, Pete, Rick, Craig. Hey, Lou. Hey, um, uh, the statistics, well, this is for the Noah, but the statistics, you seem to have it pretty well dialed in here on the Pacific side. Are you involved at all with any of the uh, statistics or the fact finding of the Sea of Cortez? Sea of Cortez. I thought you were going to go over to the western side of the Pacific, but uh, the Sea of Cortez. Yeah, our, we are engaged in some conservation actions in the Sea of Cortez in conjunction with our partner in Mexico Fisheries. Uh, one of them is the vaquita. Um, that that porpoise is in critically endangered up in the in the, in the northern Sea of Cortez area. Uh, we don't get directly involved in any other fisheries, per se, or statistics in that Sea of Cortez area, but we do have some research and, and management and conservation programs uh, at different species, but not game fish species. That's under the purview of, of Mexican fisheries. I have a question on porpoise. What is the difference between a porpoise and a dolphin? Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> I think we talked about this on the last show as well. It, it, you know, it, it's the, the porpoise term has been used by commercial per saint fishermen for a long time to, to denote a wide variety of both porpoise and dolphin. There is a porpoise group, a harbor porpoise, for example, but they, in, in general, when people say porpoise or dolphin, they're referring to the same small cetacean group. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's one of those they're related. uses. They're related, yes. You yeah, have, but they're not the same. They're diff, a little different. They are. They're porpoise different. are smaller. Exactly. Yeah, and there was a species of por- porpoise in Alaska we saw, I saw for the first time there was, they were all around the whales and stuff this this year okay. up at Whalers Cove, and they're really small. They're cute little things. Yeah, we, yeah. we just had our, our national recreational fisheries coordinators from all around the nation We're at our science center in La Jolla, and we had a discussion on marine mammal depredation, so you know bait stealing and game fish impacts. And it was interesting over in the East Coast that they do have um, dolphins that uh, have interactions with anglers in terms of bait and being hooked, uh, which we don't normally see on our site. We have, as you know, the sea lion interactions up here. So uh, Don't use the S word on this radio. I will not use the S word. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Father Ed's So basically, porpoise, porpoise and dolphin are kind of like 
seals and sea lions. It's just in the same family, but just different species. I think it's a good analogy. Okay. And do we? And I've heard that we don't, but do we have any type of porpoise that that we would encounter here, Southern California, West Coast fishing? I mean, is is that not in our fishing per se? We you know we've had some you know, interactions with common. You'll see common dolphins uh, at times, uh, and and when you go longer range, you'll see the, the the spotted and the stripe and the spinners down there, but. As far as interactions with, uh, you know, anglers getting hooked up, there it's pretty rare. No, I I just meant the the porpoise versus a dolphin. You said there were two different species. Do we have any porpoise that live around here, or is it everything that we have the the dolphins? We predominantly have you know dolphin species. There are some you know porpoise species that have a pretty wide range, and you can find them in this area. But predominantly, we're we're looking okay. at dolphin species. Dolphins. Yeah. All right, Lou. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. Bob and Dana Point, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Bob, thanks for hanging in there with us. Thank you. Uh, we were on the San Mateo on Monday. My daughter has never caught a tuna. We're out there 20 minutes, and it's flat calm. Skipper Bo sees some puddling fish. They throw a few bait. you got tuna jumping all around the boat. She cast out her talus rod, a uh, bait runner, 8,000. And I says, let out a little bit more line. Pretty soon, zoom. <laughs> 40 pounds. 40-pound yellowfin tuna. Whoa, Whoa that, that was her first, first tuna? Her first ever. Then we go off of uh, down towards uh, Oceanside. Uh, her boyfriend, who's never, well, he, he's not a, he had a jig master. I says, hey, you know, he got busted off. I says, try this uh, torium here. And he gets a 35-pound big eye. My daughter beats me out of the jackpot. I have two bluefin. One around 40 pounds, she beats me out of the jackpot. How's that for a local fishing three-quarter day? And that's a three-quarter day in the San Mateo. Out of Dana exactly. Walsh. <laughs> that is so cool, That's Bob. a good day, Bob. Are you kidding me? I get, <laughs> I, I've been on for three days and uh, overnight down in San Diego and have not even come close to that good. Yeah, congratulations. That's, great. That's a great story. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. <laughs> I like it, man. All right, how about we jump back into the phones, talk to Dick calling us from San Diego, another real patient caller. Dick, thanks for hanging in there with us. Good morning, fellas. Uh, I have a thanks and a and a question for Greg. Uh, my thanks. Um, Rick, you were uh, uh, incredibly patient in uh, bringing me up to speed on how to do wind-on leaders earlier in the week. And it uh, just really speaks to uh, the fact that Fisherman's Landing Tackle is is all about customer service. Um, you you set the bar. Uh, you didn't raise the bar. <laughs> you are the bar. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Very kind words. My pleasure. Ha- happy to do it. Uh, Greg, uh, lots of Greg. conversation about, you know, uh, stuff along cast from, uh, from the beach here in San Diego with the yellowfin and bluefin everywhere you look. Any conversation with, uh, in terms of what's happening farther offshore? Uh, any commercial boats that are uh, doing interesting stuff, maybe 50, 100 miles? Sure, that's a, that's a good question. We, we actually, as part of the measures that we talked earlier in the show, the, our commercial tuna fleet, our purseine fleet, they have limits now on uh, how much bluefin they can, they can catch. So earlier in the season, there were opportunities to wrap, you know, larger quantities of, of school bluefin and and they 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 didn't they they basically are under a pretty strict quota. So there's not a lot going on in terms of catching person quality of those fish. Also, the price was really a low price point because of all the other sources of bluefin that were hitting the market. So at this point, there's not much bluefin tuna seining going on. Um, if the yellowfin uh, become uh, in schools that that are that are vulnerable to the person gear and the market's there, they can wrap yellowfin. There's no quotas uh, in terms of their yellowfin. Uh, but, again, these are small saners that typically fish sardines, squid. Um, it's opportunistic when they go after the tunas. Um, so at this point, there just hasn't been a lot of, of landing of bluefin. I think it's under 100 tons that have been landed this so year. So they are allowed some bycatch? It's not really a bycatch. They have a target for the bluefin tuna, and they can go and, and catch it, but it's, it's strictly regulated now because it's part of the rebuilding plan for bluefin tuna. Roger. All right. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Captain Art Taylor is aboard the searcher. Good morning, Art. Hey, good morning, Pete. Uh, we just returned from a five-day trip there, kind of scratchy fishing. But uh, yesterday afternoon, that yellowfin tuna locally there kind of came up and bit a little bit, and we ended the trip with a bang there with a really, really good stop. So that was great to see. And, you know, I just wanted to point out, I think that I, somebody just mentioned how much yellowfin tuna is around. And you think about from, you know, the Coronados all the way to, oh, my gosh, 
outside Oceanside, what is that, 40, 50 miles? <laughs> and uh, it's still there, and, and uh, the quality is great. 25 to 28 pounds is most of the fish that I weighed this morning. And so there's a, a really good opportunity for some great yellowfin tuna fishing. And, you know, we have that three-day trip, August 28th, that's got some room on it. So I wanted to let the listeners know. If you haven't gotten out to try for that yellowfin tuna that's out there, it's fun, and that would be an opportunity to do it. I can't believe you still have spots on that three-day. Give us a day, and it's over a weekend, right? That's correct, yeah, August twenty, uh, August 28th through the 31st. And so it departs on Friday around noon and gets in Monday uh, somewhere between 7 and 8 in the morning. It's uh, 1095 per person, and there's... Space available. Includes all your food, stateroom accommodations, uh, fantastic ride, great, great permits, operation. Uh, all that sort of stuff. It's all inclusive. Oh, it's uh, all inclusive of the permits and everything. Yeah, not visas if we're going into Mexico, but uh, um, the Mexican permits are uh, included. Um, so it's pretty close to all inclusive. Very and good. And there's room, and it's a great opportunity to get out there. Of course, you also need to have your California fishing license if you're going. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, all how right. do we get a hold of you? We want to go on that trip. You can book directly online through the website there at searchersportfishing.com, or you can call Celia or Jan in the searcher office there, and that's 619-226. Two four zero three. There is still a ton of fish around. Ah, great words, Art. That's awesome. Great information. And I'm with Pete. I can't believe that trip's available. I'm sure that it's going to get uh, bought up. So if you're out there listening, that is a great time to go. Art, appreciate a great report as always. Look forward to hearing you <clears throat> again from the searcher real soon. All right. Hey, you know, Pete, I, I want to bring up one thing. You mentioned a really good call about your California fishing license. We've seen it at the landing a lot, and more so for longer range trips because people maybe aren't associating. You know, going long-range fishing with California licenses, bring your California license with you every time you go fishing because a lot of these trips that maybe you would anticipate are going into Mexico, and some of them do for most of the trip, but a lot of them will come back into U.S. waters. Make sure that when you go fishing on any trip right now, you bring your California license because I can't tell you how many people have had to buy a one-day or had to do a reprint of their normal license because they didn't think about it and left it at home. So yep, really good, good tip on bringing, on bringing your license. Hey, when we come back, we got a lot of Let's Talk Cookup coming your way. More of your phone calls, more great information. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Cookup on the Mighty 1090. Are you feeling that itch to get out on the water? Come fishing on the American Angler and reacquaint yourself with some familiar faces and make new friends. Captain owners Brian Kiyohara and Sam Patella take pride in every aspect of the American Angler operation, from their loyal and trusted crew to the sashimi-grade fresh fish you'll take home. It's easy to find a vacation that fits your schedule. We have everything from day and a half to 10-day trips and longer. Call me at the office, 619-223-5414, or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com. We want you to become a part of the American Angler family. My angler h 2 o like the mighty flounder, I will keep one eye on the pole and the other watching for rogue waves. I'll save water by taking shorter showers and enthusiastically celebrate talk like a pirate day. I, I will chat up the locals before launching in unfamiliar waters. And I will always, always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x rap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x rap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x rap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire Entire line at Rapala.com. 
For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619-224-3857 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. Cast Tours is a family-owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. For over 20 years, Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips. Whether it's a fishing trip, a family vacation, or an adventure, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800-593-6510 or check casttours.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right, let's jump back into those jam-packed phones, Rick. You got it, man. Jam-packed they are. We're going to this time talk to Mike. He's calling us from Carlsbad this morning. Mike, thanks for hanging in there with us. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Hi, Mike. Um, Hello, Mike. I, I have a question for Rick from yesterday. You know, I'm like the other guy. I, could, I dialed for a couple hours. I never got through. But um, uh, I wanted a recommendation. I bought. I have a um, a, a Sargosa 8000 nice. spinning reel, and I need a recommendation for a rod for it. Yeah, lots of good rods, Mike, and it depends a little bit on what you want to do. If you were going to use it just for throwing the popper, if it was going to kind of combo popper and live bait, but um, a few really good choices. I have a, a similar sized reel, and I have it on one of the the Therese uh, Waxwing rods, an 80 mh, and I I really like that rod a lot. Um, there's a couple of Therese dedicated popping rods, uh, like a 72 h might be one that would fit that bill if you were looking for something a little bigger. Um, lot, lots of good options. Um, there's a couple in the Talus line that are not too expensive that would certainly play. You can get one of those things for $129, $149, something like that. So I would say the best thing you could do if you had a chance is go to a tackle store that's got some good volume of those rods. So you could pull on three or four different ones and see what you like. Bring your reel down with you um, wherever you choose to go and, uh, and, and look at those. But I would say Therese Waxwing Rod, the Therese Popping Rod, the Talus Spinning Rod, those would be some of the ones that I would look at. And I would stay in that 7 to maybe 7.5 foot, or maybe 7 to 8 foot range would be the, the, the realm that I'd be looking in. There you go. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Rick Jensen from Sport Fishing Financial. Good morning, Rick. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Up, Rick? Hey, I just wanted to let the listeners know that there's a pretty cool event coming up this Wednesday at the uh, Santa North Murray Parks and Foundation. They've got a historic cottage there here in the San Clemente State Park, and uh, you guys may have heard of Ken Nielsen. He's uh, kind of a legend in the commercial and sport fishing business. He's going to be doing a lecture on uh, the history of fishing here in Southern California. Oh, wow. That's, That's cool. cool. I had no idea. So how do you get into that? Um, it, it's, a, it's a $10 or $15 charge to get in, depending on when you get set up. But uh, you, it starts this Wednesday, 6 p.m., as a reception and gallery viewing. And then at 7.30, they've got the, the lecture going on. And on my Facebook page, I posted their poster for it. So if you go to Sport Fishing Financial's uh, Facebook page, you can have a look at their poster and see what that's all about. All right, sportfishingfinancial.com. Well, it's actually on my Facebook page. Okay. I just look up Sport Fishing Financial, and I kind of copied their poster there and posted it for any of the listeners that want to get some information on it. All right, cool. Well, very, very cool. good. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Rick, and uh, we'll uh, we'll check that out on uh, Sport Fishing Financial's Facebook page. Appreciate the heads up. Okay, guys. Have a good week. All right, you too. Paul and Bellflower, you're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Paul. Hi, guys. How you doing? Great. Great. Good morning. Uh, quick fish report. Went out yesterday all day between Catalina and San Clemente and just caught one dodo. It was kind of, kind of rough and kind of hit and miss, but it wasn't that great for us. Oh, that's too bad. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Some, some, but some days anyway, are like that. My question is, are they ever going to have a tag or a season or something for black sea bass? Because I catch one quite often. Thanks for the question, um, 
As far as a uh, fishery for black sea bass, I mean, you know, as you know, those 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 fish were heavily exploited and they're on the comeback. Um, we, I'm not aware of any plans at the council or at the state level that I've heard of that, that are talking about a season. I think there's still there's still some road to travel before we feel like that species is population has recovered enough to begin considering a, a bag. Um, we are, however, at our, at our booth at the show talking about using some descender devices and, and for release of fish. Obviously, with the black sea bass, when you get into those animals of that large size, uh, it's difficult to large. release them. We are, though, recommending that that you don't puncture or try to vent them with a fillet knife or a, or a needle. We found that uh, that is a higher probability of introducing bacteria and infection that will lead to um, a mortality or a death on that fish. So. They will go down on their own uh, at, after a time. Uh, we've tried to push them down uh, to get them underneath the boat and give them a head start uh, with, with the back end of a long 15-foot gaff just to kind of push them under the surface. Um, we had one on the start. Royal Star, and it, it, it released just fine. Uh, Tim and company have a you know, very strong ethic about releasing all those those bigger fish. So, um, so uh, is that a federal or a state-managed <coughs> fish? State. It's a state managed fish. Yes. Do you? But you guys on the federal level have some input on that. Um, you know, we work through the council process, the Pacific Council, where all of these, you know, these these management issues would come up. But uh, we work with with the state closely. Uh, but this is not a species that we're directly involved with. Uh, I don't believe we're doing much research out of our science center as well on these animals. Yeah. I definitely understand where Paul's coming from. I mean, I, you know, it's not a thing that every once in a while we see one. If we're ever targeting coastal fishing while fishing on the bottom so halibut sea bass yellowtail things like that i mean there's it it would be more rare to not see one than than to catch one nowadays I yes. mean, they, you know i'm not saying that that means we should open up a season or not but i mean it but a tag thing might be good i i love i always thought that'd be a cool thing just strictly for a fundraiser because you see it on the hunting side of california fish and wildlife uh, you know you see it so much now, you know, you apply for a tag and you pay the money, you know, for a tag. And you're basically putting your money in for a lottery that maybe you'll get drawn and maybe you wouldn't. And I always thought it would be a great fundraiser for California Fish and Wildlife. You, you know, if you, $10 for an opportunity. Maybe they give away 100 tags, whatever, 20 tags for that matter, whatever it is. But uh, I don't know. Who, who knows? I, I I always thought that it, it would be a thing because they're – You have a slot limit or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, this is just coming from fishermen. Oh, I have yeah, no yeah. clue what the science is. And maybe they're yeah. still way more endangered than, than I would but think. We're but we're seeing a lot more but, of them. But we see them all the time. And when you're sea bass fishing, they, they're they to the point of nuisance, yeah, nuisance. you know. Yeah. And the, ch- the challenge of, of managing recovering populations is one of our biggest challenges sure. both on the state and federal. And you, you take – California sea lions, for example, you know, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act, they're fully protected. Mm-hmm. Population has been on the rise and growing exponentially that, that those numbers. And so how we deal with these interactions uh, that are now having an economic consequence is a big challenge for us. Uh, we had it in, you know, Don Hansen has been a, a vocal uh, proponent in, in helping focus some of this discussion. So we hope to, to continue having dialogues on, on how we can deal with these uh, increasing populations like black sea bass, like sea lions, that uh, make it difficult to continue fishing your target species when you when you interact some of these other species. Yeah. Do you have to deal a lot with sea lion issues uh, at NOAA? We do. We actually have a, a stranding uh, program. Um, as you as you're aware, earlier in this year we had in, in last year quite a few of these uh, pups that were stranding, um, and and so that was a big issue. We don't actually pay for the rehabilitation. Just wanted to clarify that. We 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 provide funds to get the animals off the beach and to do some necropsies and to see what the cause of mortality so we can look at the health of the ecosystem. But we don't pay for feeding and, and returning these animals back to the wild. That's all nonprofit uh, uh, money. And I know that has been brought up by anglers as an issue, um, you know, rehabilitating animals that then come back and may be less afraid of humans and having higher interaction rates. We're, we're kind of looking at what that might be and if there's something we can do along those right the lines. There you go. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Appreciate that. You know, you mentioned earlier about – Noah being involved with bait and tackle stores. Yeah, I mean it, it's great to hear the callers come, you know, explaining their interactions with Rick and, and the other folks at tackle shops that provide this great local knowledge. So we've we've actually did an economic survey nationally on the value and the economic benefit of of what we call brick and mortar bait and tackle shops. So you know these these shops that range from small mom and pops to larger, um, you know, retail shops. 
And the value on the West Coast uh, from this study, about $800 million in direct sales from no these kidding. brick and mortar shops. Wow, that's and, rad. And they generate, you know, jobs in the community. But for us at, 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 at both the state and federal level, these shops are places where people come to learn about regulations. Filet, you know, we were talking in the break about possibly having, you know, a filet video to show a little bit more right. of that education. So for us, the, the value of, of being a focal point for the community and the benefit it's providing to jobs and the economy, uh, it's, 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 it's a huge portion, and we wanted to show, highlight that. And so we've been collecting data, and, and the first report came out. And, Pete, I can give you the, uh, the link to the report so anglers that are more interested can read and see some of the, uh, of the, of the impacts. Okay, good. Cool. Well, that's good, and it's good. Supporting your local tackle stores is, is what you should be doing. Indeed. I agree. All right. <laughs> let's hey, go let's jump back on the phone. You got it, bro. How about we talk to Judy calling from Riverside? Is this Judy uh, that I'm thinking of? Good morning, Judy. Hi. How are hey, you? I thought so. How was your Whalers <laughs> Cove trip? Well, I called this morning because I really would like to encourage more women, whether you're wives or a women's angling club or any female group that might like to go, and they're they don't know what their you know what the accommodations will be like or anything like that. And Whalers Cove is number one immaculate. Number two, the food is fantastic. The rooms are very very comfortable. I noticed several families there where there was like grandparents, parents, and then grandchildren, and that and they were all having such a good time. We also have a new skipper there uh, who happens to be a girl. I can't remember her name because I didn't fish with her. I, of course, fish with Team No Bananas. But <laughs> of course. you it's just the best place for a woman to go. It really is. The water's calm. You don't get beat up, and there's lots of fishing. So you're not standing there just soaking bait. You're definitely catching fish. It's, it's catching, not fishing. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was great having you, Judy, and uh, we'll look forward to you coming back next year on the four-day, right? Yes, I'm already signed up, the deposit's taken care of, and I will be there. All right, Judy, great having you. Thanks for the call, too. And that's, you know, like what Judy says, it's a great place for a couple, great place for ladies to go. And like she says, she's a single lady, and uh, take an angling club with it, the lady anglers. Awesome. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and jump back in the phones. You got it. How about we talk to Goldie? Goldie calling us from North Park this morning. Hi, Goldie. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Yeah, you're very welcome. I uh, just came back from a seven-day on the Royal yesterday, the Royal Star. Oh, uh, nice. Most, most remiss if I didn't uh, give a shout-out to the crew and uh, especially Drew in the galley. Uh, incredible. Nothing like uh, it. And uh, their fish handling is uh, par none. Thank you for turning me on to the Royal, Ricky. Um, we got some rare fish that rode the California current in. The uh, gefilte from the mid mid Pacific. <laughs> the, I think the Hawaiians call it the oive oive. Right. <laughs> El Nino. Fish. Write that down, yeah. Craig. The oive right. oive. Yeah. Right. That's the first no, for me. No, no, locally is a gefilte. <laughs> right, but seriously, the flat ball. I was fishing the big Shimano flat ball. Um, you know, everything that you say about that jig is spot on, but I learned a trick. You can buy a UV light that, uh, like the bouncers use when they check your ID going into a club. Yes, they still check mine, even though I'm 68. Yeah, right. Uh, um, but it charges them up so that they glow. And is it, uh, does it make them work better? Let me tell you, uh, after I charged one up in the gray I and uh, flipped it out, got bit by a bluefin. At the time I threw it into gear, he had swallowed the entire flat fall. I said to What's the noise again? That's it. <laughs> that's it. No, that's a, it's an amazing jig. That's a good tip. 
That's great. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a very, very good tip. Uh, charge it up or just hang it up in the light if it's early morning, and uh, that'll charge it up too. But I would think the black light. Yeah, probably. those UV lights, they're, they they are the bomb for that. Yeah. The guys have their PL68s or like oh, yeah, even, yeah. Better, even better off your glow, uh, your glow flat ball. That's there you it. go. All right, Goldie, glad you had a great trip. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. How about next up we talk to Mike. Mike calling us from El Cajon. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hi, Mike. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my call. I'm sure glad I called the show and got to listen to uh, how great uh, Pete's uh, <clears throat> Alaska trip was. Congratulations. Uh, I couldn't get through yesterday because Shimano was on, and you know people are probably in their sleep pressing speed out. But I got a question for you, Rick. I know you got the answer for me. I got two reels here. One's a, a Shimano bait runner, 8000D, and then I got a C line. A uh, black BRI 4500, and I'm just wondering. I, when I got these, I got them from my surf rods. I'm wondering if either one of these will be amicable to 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 try using like a popper, huh? Yeah, I would say that your bait runner of the two would definitely be the better one. It's got enough drag. It's got enough line. That would be the one I, I would fish for the popper. There you go. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Hills in Ventura. You're up next on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Hills. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I was wondering, because um, uh, of the 360 foot depth um, regulation with rockfish now, and people are catching cow cod around here, um, is there a requirement to have a descending device? Good question. Good question. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I don't believe that it's a mandatory requirement at this point. What we're trying to do is is to foster that the ethic of using them. But the council has. Um, factored in the release mortality survivorship for these species and that by people using the descender devices. So that in turn has allowed that extra 10 fathoms of fishing water and that's created an incredible amount of extra fishing opportunity right now. So we, we try to stay away from writing a regulation to use them because they get, it gets complicated and regulations are already complicated enough. Yeah. So uh, it, right, right now it's a voluntary um, and it's an, it's a basically a fishing ethic conservation method. We're hey, trying Craig, to on, on the sea lions, um, I thought we're not supposed to touch them. you got to stay 10 feet away. So how does it – how is there a loophole for people to, like, quote, you know, quote unquote, rescue uh, a, an animal that's naturally living its cycle? That's a good question. There There is no loophole in terms of interacting with the sea lion in terms of physical touch, but – these are people that are working in the stranding networks, and they have permits and clearances to take those animals off the beach. It ranges from lifeguards to the SeaWorld team to our team. There are a bunch of techniques, though, a non-lethal deterrence methods that you can use if you have sea lions or any other species or harbor seals that are that are you know in in the area. And we list those on our website. Um, you know, it can be anywhere from you know slingshots to paintball. There are some techniques that you can use, uh, but there is no direct um, tagging or touching of, of the animals at this point. All right. Good questions, though. And, you know, everybody should have a descending device and not force totally, the feds man. into making another law. Yeah, we're so much better yeah. off taking the, you know, taking the, the thing into our own hands rather than being, yeah. you know, I agree. I, I, I'm i with you. It's and there's plenty of information on the NOAA website about the descending devices, right? Correct. And yeah. they're cheap. Yeah. I mean, you can pick yeah. up a nice tool for less than 30 bucks and have it on the boat forever. They're easy to use. There's just if you fish rockfish, there's no reason not to have one. Yeah, and, and on and on YouTube, if you just Google uh, rockfish release, there's several really good videos that our Science Center folks have put together, and we have them linked to our site. It'll show you how to properly use it as well. Good there call. You go. Thanks a lot for the call. Hey, when we come back, we're gonna find out what lucky guy's going fishing aboard the Daily Double. We got trip for two, and we return. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Here's John Ireland. 
for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero was awarded the Certificate of Excellence from TripAdvisor for four straight years. Especially interesting, most hotels are just hotels, and most people stay in the hotel and go do their activities elsewhere. Rancho Leonero, of course, provides fishing, diving, all activities, all meals, your whole vacation. So the fact that we're so highly rated, we're very proud of it. From picking you up at the airport to dropping you off, literally everything is a turnkey from there. We make it as easy as we can for you at the ranch. From your meals to whether you're going to go fishing or diving or just hang out by the pool. When you're coming to Rancho Lanero, you are coming to John Ireland's home. I guarantee the best fishing vacation experience in all of Baja. It's unique. There's nowhere that I could think of to get the same experience that you get at Rancho Lanero. Our new reservation phone number is 800-646-2252, 646-Baja, and RanchoLanero.com. It's really unique. It is. We're very proud of it. Hey, this is Captain Paul Hebert from the Wicked Pissa. My brother Bruce and I make a living catching giant bluefin tuna. In fact, I wouldn't even go fishing with any other sunglasses in Maui Jim. Put a pair of Maui Jims on and instantly the glare is gone, the UV that can damage your eyes is gone, the ocean's true colors come shining through like never before. And with more contrast and clarity, you can see the bluefin at that critical time. Take it from me. Try a pair at your local tackle shop or check out MauiJim.com. You won't believe your eyes. <laughs> You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis, Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half, three-quarter, and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Right, the big winner of the half day trip for two aboard the Daily Double out of Point Lomo Sport Fishing. Going fishing with Fred the Boys. Going to Goldie in North Park. Goldie, congratulations. You are going to love fishing on that Daily Double. Yes, indeed. And Craig Heber from NOAA, thank you for taking the time out to be here. And this was thank awesome. you for doing the job that you do. Well, it's not a, an easy one. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the opportunity you guys provide us here on Let's Talk Hookup to come you know, talk to anglers and, and get the information out. You guys do a tremendous job. Thank, Thank you for you. what you do, too. Thank you. Will you do it again for us? For sure. All right. Great. All right. Thank you very much. And if somebody wants more information on government regulations, what you guys do at NOAA, there's a great website. Yep, westcoastnoaa.gov. If you just Google in West Coast Fisheries, NOAA.gov, NIMPS, any of those, it's going to direct you right to our, our site. All right. Very good. Thanks, Craig, for coming, and thank you for listening today. We're going to be back next Saturday and Sunday. Next Saturday, Jeff and the gang from Cedros Adventures will be in all right. talking yellowtail and calicos and all kinds of good stuff. And then next Sunday, the man himself, Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Royal Star. Thanks for listening today. We'll see you next week right back here on the Mighty 1090. Bike Week Radio is